I will call the special meeting of the Central Parish Council to order. We will start off with our invocation, which will be led by Chief Butch Browning, uh, the head of the state. He's the fire marshal for the state of Louisiana. Chief. Hey, Mr. Chairman and members, uh, take a moment. We'll, we'll bow our heads and um, ask our Heavenly Lord for, for his guidance and his, his wisdom. Heavenly Father, as, as we come together as, as leaders, we know that uh, these men work hard to learn about our parish, to learn how we can bring about the quality of life that, that ensures safety, ensures security, and ensures prosperity. We ask you to put your hands on this room and you help the decisions tonight be made with your wisdom, in your name, and in your will. We ask that you, you look over the future of not only our parish, but our state and our country. We know that, that we as, as citizens have a duly responsibility to carry out the missions of doing goodwill, of showing the goodwill and the brotherhood that has made us all so successful today. We ask these things, God, because we know that you are our creator. We know that you are the ultimate guider of our world. Father, we also ask that you, you put a special hand uh, on a, a family here in Ascension Parish, Miss Tammy Edmondson, who, who did pass away today. We ask you to, to be with her family and to comfort them and to help them through these very difficult times. All these things we ask in your name. We ask that you, you continue the blessings and continue to help us as we lead. Amen. 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 Thank you, Chief. Our, our pledge tonight will be led by Councilman uh, Gonzalez, uh, Councilman Terrence Irvin. Terrence? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, sir. I'd like to call on President Mornez. Uh, President Mornez, I believe you have a, a few people that need to talk before yeah. they leave. Please, Thank sir. you. Thank you, uh, Chairman, and uh, happy birthday, Councilman Lambert. Thank you, Mr. President. Councilman Valentine, it was Friday, so both of you gentlemen, uh, I want to wish you all a happy birthday. Sir, are you going to sing happy birthday? No, sir. <laughs> no, sir. I, I don't think you want me to sing. Uh, it's, uh, I'd like to also say it's... Uh, John McMillan's birthday also today. Well, I'm not saying it for him. I, no. <laughs> Go ahead, sir. Anyway, we, we put together a short PowerPoint. We've called this special meeting uh, on, for Lamar Dixon, and we have some distinguished people in the audience tonight uh, that's going to give us uh, a, a little bit uh, more information on our funding sources. Uh, we think we've put together a, a, a package uh, that we can actually buy Lamar Dixon and uh, not have any taxes, don't have any sort of stipulations, uh, and put it together. But I'm going to ask uh, COA, uh, Mr. Grant, to go ahead with a short five-minute presentation, and then I'm going to ask these speakers to come forward. Okay, sir. Thank you. Good evening, members of the council. I put together a very quick presentation to uh, talk a bit about the acquisition opportunity in front of us for Lamar Dixon. And what I'm going to talk to you about is the, uh, the challenges that we're facing here in economic development, the opportunities that this, this presents for us, and uh, give you a little data on, on, on where we are in this situation. Well, anyway. To move quickly through this. The challenges that we face here are that we're trying to develop a diversified economic base to support the continuing growth in Ascension Parish, to maximize the growth of our revenues, um, the revenues available to us in, in order to facilitate our future growth and development, and to create and maintain regional attractions that spur growth and development. We also want to be able to provide a sustainable economic and recovery environment for the parish in future disasters. Uh, if you, you recall how we, we struggled through the last disaster to make sure that we had sufficient resources and, and could be uh, self-reliant 
in, in our disaster recovery, and that was a charge that, that I received uh, from you and the, and the president immediately after Gustav was to make us self-reliant and, and be able to survive those first four or five critical days after the storm. So we also want to maintain our economic viability post Gustav and to create a logistical supply network that allows the parish to provide sustenance to the citizens during recovery. In that, we now have an opportunity to, do the, to, to meet those challenges that I addressed to you earlier. And as a result of the damages suffered by Hurricane Gustav, the Sitchin Parish has become eligible for recovery funds appropriated by Congress. These funds must be spent on activities that support long-term recovery of the parish and sustain its economic growth and development. A plan for expending these funds must be developed and approved by the Louisiana Recovery Authority by the end of this federal fiscal year. And out of that comes a, a, a strategy that relates to Lamar Dixon. So I, I pulled some data from the most recent economic impact study on Lamar Dixon. In 2006, it had 134,000 visitors. The estimated visitor spending during that year was $13.9 million. Total new sales during that time were $21.4 million, and an average of 379 jobs were created that year. And the sales taxes collections that we could document were in the ex excess of $237,000. Visitors over the last three years, we've had 136,000 in 06, 211,000 in 07, 133,000 in 08, but that related to in actual events. In 06, that was 358 events. In 07, that was 336 events. And in 08, that was 297 events. We've now cobbled together some funding commitments that help us in, in this acquisition, and I want to walk you through those quickly, and, and there are people here that will speak more directly to those after my presentation. We acquired an earmark some two years ago, a $250,000 earmark supported by uh, Senator Vitter that we now have in hand that needs to be expended by the end of this fiscal year. It is specifically earmarked for the acquisition of Lamar Dixon. So 750000 has been proposed by Senator Landry, and you have a letter uh, in front of you showing her, her support, and her staff is here to, to, to speak to that as well. And that will be put in, in the FY10 federal budget. $2 million of state capital outlay that Senator Amity will speak to you about shortly. Uh, the President will talk to you about a $1 million private contribution that has been made that we, we propose to go for operating revenue. And $4.5 million in these recovery funds that I've been talking about are now available to us to, to support this, this endeavor. And what I, what I can tell you about this money is it is very unusual. It's, as I told you earlier, it was an appropriation from Congress, but it is 100 percent federal money. It does not require a match. So that, that then makes the $8.5 million that is, is, is available for this acquisition. The purchase schedule. We have gone directly from the lease document that was negotiated some years ago on what is, if we just follow what it was previously negotiated, we owe by the uh, June 30th of this year $250,000 to pull the trigger on the purchase. That's what needs to be done this year. And as I told you, there's a $250,000 earmark that is currently in hand. $250,000 is due one year from now as the second payment. $500,000 is due two years from now, $500,000 three years from now, and in the balance in the fourth year. What I've shown you in relation to a funding strategy is those funds being available at the end of this year, all of those funds being available at the end of this year. Operating. Proposed operating allocation, as we said, there's a potential of a $1 million private donation that would allow us to operate uh, at least two years at the current level of operating of about $500,000 uh, to, to operate the facility. I think there's some, some economies that can be done there. We might be able to shave that down a bit, but the, the, the facility operates with no nothing happening there at about a $500,000 annual cost. So in summary, what we want to tell you is that the parish needs to encourage the development of businesses and attractions that grow the parish economy. The parish needs to be self-reliant and self-sufficient in disaster recovery operations. The opportunity to put forth a funding and operating plan for the facility is now, as I've shown you by the funding plan. And the parish can take advantage of this opportunity to create a major economic generator with the resources. Thank you, Mr. Grant. President Mornez. Yes, and uh, Lamar Dixon, uh, a lot of people think of it just as an equestrian center. Uh, it's not just an equestrian center. I mean, different organizations use it throughout the year. This year, uh, 
We've used it quite a bit uh, on meetings and uh, as far as Smart Growth Conference we've had there. We've had several, uh, uh, we've hosted recovery uh, meetings there. So it's used a lot. The high schools use it for graduation. Uh, we can do our sock hop there now because uh, it's growing for the elderly. It can be a diverse recreational facility, not just an equestrian, uh, equestrian uh, facility. And also in the event of any hurricane, we can now have a place to stock our valuable resources, have a, at least a week's supply uh, on hand. Uh, <coughs> it will be available to the state as it has been in the past. It's something that we can, uh, it's logistically set up. We, we're in a transitional zone from the coastal parishes to uh, you know, the, the, the parishes that are further north, so, you know, a lot of different uh, people use it, law enforcement, fire enforcement, uh, fire uh, law enforcement, and National Guard, military, uh, so it, it's, it's diverse during recovery uh, uh, efforts. So, again, it, it's a great facility. Uh, we got, a, a, I think, a heck of an opportunity here to purchase it, uh, at no cost to the parish, and, and I think there's ways that we can uh, cut down operating costs and uh, hopefully make it operate uh, at either a break-even point or a smaller loss. Uh, I mean, we spend a lot of money uh, all over. We're not in business to make money. We're in business to provide services, and if we get these 240 acres and all these improvements, I think we'll provide a better quality of life for the for the citizens of Ascension Parish. So. With that, I'd like to uh, ask uh, Senator Amade to come up, uh, and it's an effort not only with Senator Amade, but also with uh, Representative Smiley and uh, Representative Lambert. So, uh, Jody, could you please come up? And one more, I'm sorry. No. Representative Obear is also here. Actually, I think it's in his district, so. <laughs> 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 Thank you, Mr. President, and uh, I guess Mr. Chairman. <laughs> and uh, members of the council and every, everyone here tonight. Uh, I'm just going to talk for a second, and I'd like for Representative Smiley to also say a few words. Uh, as you know, I've always basically supported Lamar Dixon in the, in the, in the parish. We've uh, been in office, I guess, five years. We've gotten a little money to help operate it and, and do the best we could. About, I guess, about two months ago, Tommy called me and said, look, we uh like to make one more effort to try and purchase it. I said, he said, and Central Andrew wants to know what the state's going to do. And she actually called my office. She's never called me before. And uh, they didn't know she knew my name. And what I heard, I don't think she knows my name. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Uh, but anyway, so I went. Uh, I was actually in Baton Rouge that day. I called uh, Timmy Teeple. And I'm just telling a little story. I went and met with him, Chief of Staff for Governor General, and talked to him about what he thought we could do. And so I left that meeting. He assured me that he thought we could do some certain things. And I immediately called Representative Smiley and Lambert and, and O'Byron and said, here's a plan. Would you all like to take a, a run at this? And they said, absolutely. So it's a team effort. I want I know they had my name up there, but uh, Mert and Elton and Eddie. Uh, Eddie's the son of the senior in high school. He's at a baseball game in Dutchtown right now, so he couldn't make it. But he sends his regards. So anyway. What we came up with is a way that the state could appropriate $2 million for Lamar Dixon to purchase it. It's a one-time appropriation. We're going to do our best to get all of it this year. I think we can. If we're a little short, we'll certainly finish it next year. We've got plenty of time. But I think we can probably do it this year. Subsequently, after the meeting, uh, that was a couple months ago, maybe six weeks, uh, I met with Governor General last week, a one-on-one -on -one meeting, me and him and his staff, and he told me some things he's interested in, and he said, I know you got some things on your agenda, what do you, I said, well, first of all, we got roads, and uh, he said, well, I know, we, you know, we're working on all that in 42, and it's moving along, and, and some other problems we got, and I said, I want to, you know, I want to get your commitment about Lamar Dixon, too, you know, while we face, he said, Timmy's already talked to me about it, we fine with it, we support it. It's a, it, it has a lot of impacts on the state, not only the Ascension Parish, but, you know, surrounding parishes. When we have a disaster, the state comes in there with all the sheriffs. And uh, so we got, we got support from the state. Uh, 
I've talked to a lot of legislators, and uh, for the most part, everybody's okay with it. The way it's going to work is it's actually not going to all be in capital outlay. Some of it is going to be in the amendments to House Bill 1, which is our budget. And there's a certain amount of money that, that each chamber gets every year. The House gets a certain amount, and the Senate gets a certain amount. We get to make amendments for our local projects. In the past, we've done some things with fire departments, a couple small uh, road projects, towns, the cities, the power. We give, so we basically going basically going to pool our money together for one year to, to, to get Lamar Dixon. That's where the money's coming from. And then you might say, well, suppose he vetoes it. Well, he looked me in the eye today and said, no, that, he laughed. And he said, that's not, that's not a problem. So, uh, and that's about all I have to say. We've committed to work as hard as we can to get all of it this year. I think we can. Uh, some might, might say, well, what about next year? If, well, we always have a certain amount of money that the state's going to have for projects such as this. Every community needs certain projects that they can't afford, whether it be, you know, little towns like Sorrento, uh, all the way up in Killian, part of my, you know, we get, we do little grants and stuff, and that's, that's where it's coming from. It's not going to affect, you know, uh, anything else that we're trying to do. And, uh, you know, I really think it's, it's something, uh, you know, to operate and, and all that, that's, that's a job that's going to be left with the parish council. And I mean, I, you know, that's going to be y'all decisions. How to, we're not going to get in, and me and Murt talked about, we, our job as legislators is to, you know, uh, when we have people that call us and need help, whether it be Ascension or, or like my, I got St. James, Livingston, St. John, you know, my job is to go and get as much money as I can for my district, and that's that's what we're trying to do here, and that's what we're going to do. So that's where it is, and um, I want to thank you all for having us. I don't want to keep talking too long, but uh, thank everybody for being here. I know there's a lot of people here. and. Uh, Mark wants to say a few words. If I left him, any, do you have any time left, Mr. Chair? Yes, yes sir. <laughs> Thank you, Senator. <laughs> Parish President, Pat, Council. Thank you for allowing me to be here. I appreciate it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you just listened to Jody Amade's longest speech he ever made. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we certainly realized during the hurricanes the need for Lamar Dixon. The state realizes it, Governor Jindal realizes it, and this is an easy project for us to get behind. And we are solidly behind it, and we will do whatever we can on the state level to help Lamar Dixon. So thank you for your work, and let's just get together and, and make this thing a reality. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Mert. you, Mert. Representative O'Bear, would you like to say something, sir? Good evening. I initially said no because I don't want to be redundant, but I just want to take this opportunity to introduce myself to the folks here. I'm Representative O'Bear, the more district districts in my district. But I tell you what, uh, I'm a freshman in the house, and I've gotten a lot of support from these guys and from uh, Lambert. We work well together. We work on one accord for the people of this parish and this district. And uh, the more Dixon is a great project for this area. And we're gonna do everything we can to make that happen. Uh, y'all know I served on the council in St. James for 16 years. And I was sitting back there admiring y'all facility. And I was let those guys know in St. James need to catch up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Representative. Thank you. President Mordenez, please. Yes, uh, Mr. Rainwater's here with uh, GOSEP in the governor's office. I'd like him to come up, please. Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. President, thank you. And uh, I'd like to say, my name is Paul Rainwater. I'm the Executive Director of the Louisiana Recovery Authority. And uh, on many occasions, uh, well, Gustav, I, Katrina, and Rita, the governor, uh, during Gustav and I, the governor deployed me around local government. And so I got to see firsthand what Lamar and Dixon did uh, you know, for the state, not just for, not just for the parish, but for the entire state. Uh, just want to let you know that uh, Senator Amade, uh, Representative Smiley, and Obear work as a team. They support you know your projects throughout and they're they're very easy to work with from my perspective sitting on the governor's cabinet so i wanted to let you know that and i appreciate their support on this in fact uh senator amadeus called me at least once every two days to ask me about the eligibility of this project as it relates to disaster recovery dollars just real quick the state of louisiana will receive approximately 800 million dollars in recovery money the first allocation was of that was 435 million dollars which uh, Senator Landry played a huge role, and I know Jason Hughes from her staff is here. And uh, 
So what we decided to do, the governor and I sat down and talked about how do we use these disaster recovery dollars. Of that first allocation of $435 million, what we decided to do is push it down to local government. I came from local government. The governor made it clear that I think the best decisions about recovery come from local government. And, of course, I agreed wholeheartedly. We talked to Senator Landrieu about it. She thought it was a great idea. She thought that HUD would support that. Because if you remember, Katrina and Rita, the dollars were kind of stuck in Baton Rouge. And I didn't want to do that. So the allocation that we're sending down to you, down to the parish president, uh, will be about $18 million. You get about 10.6 in the first allocation and about 8 in the second allocation. And I will tell you that uh, what we did with HUD for Gustav and Ike is a little bit different than Katrina and Rita. We asked them to approve what we call uh, projects for economic revitalization. And so this project, uh, Lamar Dixon, what we want, want you to do is we want you to retain that facility to help retain jobs and keep your economy strong. And so uh, it's a, there's about a four-month approval process for this project, but I'll tell you that it is an eligible project. We will support it 100%. I have a person, a senior person on my staff, actually one of my directors, who's going to work with Cedric to write the project description so we can walk this thing through. And so I just want you to know that we supported 100%, the dollars are there, and it's an eligible project, and so there's no concern on your part about what we're going to do at the Louisiana Recovery Authority. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. I'll be happy to answer any questions or take any comments. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much, sir. I'd like to call on Mr. Jason Hughes with Senator Landrieu's office. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the Parish Council, President Martinez. Uh, good evening. I'm Jason Wynn Hughes, Regional Manager to United States Senator Mary Landrieu, and I'm very proud. I'm, I will be very brief to uh, be here on her behalf tonight and to join with uh, the members of the legislative delegation and all of our local leaders and certainly commend Senator Almade and Representative Smiley, Lambert, and Obear for their phenomenal work um, on this project. I not only uh, rise as Senator Landrieu's regional manager, but um, Gonzales is actually my second home. I maintain a secondary residence right here in Gonzales when the legislature is in session. And so I will make sure that uh, this project is fresh on Senator Landry's mind. <laughs> but certainly, um, the senator has, has stated to me personally and to our state director that this is her number one priority at this time for Ascension Parish. And she has committed um, $750,000 through the Transportation and HUD um, appropriations bill that has gone through Congress right now. So I just want to reiterate that support on behalf of Senator Landrieu. Certainly we look forward to working with you, Mr. Chairman, members of the council, the parish president, and the entire legislative uh, delegation. Um, the Lamar Dixon, I don't want to be redundant, but we all know it serves as an economic development um, hub and, and certainly an emergency preparedness center, not only for Ascension Parish, but um, when we look at this from a regional standpoint um, and, and also an entertainment complex, et cetera. So, uh, we pledge our full 100% support. We look forward to working with you all, and thank you for your efforts. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I think we have uh, Mayor Barney also know here. He wants to. Mayor. Thank you, uh, Mr. President, uh, Mr. Chairman, Council members. Good evening. Uh, as you all probably know, last night at the council meeting, uh, we did have a resolution that was passed uh, on behalf of assisting you and helping you in any way we can with Lamar Dixon. Uh, all the uh, the councilman, it was it was a 4-0. We have one man absent, but uh, we are on record in, in giving you whatever support we can. I will tell you, they did not come up with any funds as yet. <laughs> they did tell me that they wanted to, they wanted to sit down with you. Uh, the president and I have talked uh, on several occasions, and we plan to do so more. And uh, you know, whatever we can do to this issue, we certainly are there. Thank you, Mayor. Yes, sir. Uh, also, we've. Uh, Mr. Nicky Prejean is not here at an airport authority meeting. I don't think he's here right now, but uh, if we actually introduce this ordinance and at the public hearing, uh, he's going to come forward. Uh, I think he's put together. He's the one that pledged the uh, up to a million dollars and maybe more. He said he's raised 700000 so far for private uh, donations. Uh, he's got commitments to that. And, uh, so I want to thank him also uh, for putting that effort forward. Uh, as I said, it, it, it's been a team effort. We've all worked hard together. Uh, I think it would be a shame if, if we lost this facility at this point. Uh, basically, what we want to ask you tonight is, is to introduce uh, an ordinance to go ahead and invoke the purchasing uh, 
of Lamar Dixon to execute that. Uh, we have our attorney here tonight, uh, Mr. Jeff Diaz, who uh, actually negotiated the first lease uh, and the lease purchase on this years ago. So he would be here to answer any of your questions. I know there's several uh, new councilmen uh, here, including myself on this, uh, but I think it's a good document. Uh, so with that, uh, I, Mr. Chairman, uh, that's what we're here tonight, and okay, I want to thank all these people for, for coming out. Uh, sir, before we introduce an in ordinance, I've got several people that want to talk tonight, and I'm going to call on you one at a time. You will be allotted three minutes. Uh, first, I have Mr. James Bordelon. <coughs> How y'all doing tonight? Thank y'all for allowing me to speak. Uh, my name is James Bordelon. This is my daughter, Megan. Uh, Megan, as many of y'all already know, she's sent correspondence to everybody on the board. She's sent correspondence to people all over the state in regards to the 4-H, uh, to Lamar Dixon for the 4-H. Uh, she's been showing livestock there for the past two years. And in that time, she's met people from all over our parish all over the district and all over the state of Louisiana. And uh, she's met a lot of friends, not only here, and she's got friends now all over the state. And when these people come into the into our parish, they, they talk uh, very highly about the facility there. Uh, they have everything they need here, the restaurants, the stores, everything. They come here, they spend money, they eat at our restaurants, they buy our gas, they go to our stores and they enjoy the parish. And just uh, ask y'all to consider the purchase of Lamar Dixon. It's a good thing, and she needs some place to be for the next seven years. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Bordelon. Okay, next I have Mr. Don Heisel, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, member of the council, Mr. President. Uh, I'm Don Heisel. I was the chief administrative officer under the Hughes administration for most of his term. And uh, I was in the initial steps of acquiring Lamar Dixon. Uh, I thought it was a great idea at the time. And uh, now that I've been away from public service and had time to think about it, I think it's a better idea. Uh, it's great being up here before you as a citizen of the CAO because I don't have to hit the pressure. Uh, I'm going to be short. Councilman Thompson and I took a trip to uh, Scottsdale, Arizona a few years back, 04, 05, I don't remember when. And we visited a facility that was a hosted an Arabian horse show at the time. Uh, the facility had, had facility had one covered arena, had dirt parking, had rattlesnakes around, somebody killing rattlesnakes, and uh, it was uh, run by the, owned by the city of Scottsdale. They didn't make money. If you want to, if they said, if you want to look at our book, we don't make money, but we probably bring in hundreds of millions of dollars to the city of Scottsdale. And that correct, Mr. Thompson, you were. Um, I also visited a facility in Virginia. Uh, beautiful facility. Uh, it was owned by the state, did not make money at the facility, but brought in a lot to the local economy. So I, I think that's what we have to look at. You know, we're not going to make money at these facilities. They're not there to make money unless you're a, a private investor and want to make some money, then you're investing the wrong thing. Uh, Lamar Dixon is not a diamond in the rough, it's a diamond. And I think for, and I appreciate the parish president for giving the, uh, the opportunity again to bring this before the people. Because I, I think we'd be making a major mistake to shut that facility down. I mean, it's a gift uh, at the price we're getting it. And with a little work, it could be the premier site in the country. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Next, I have Mr. John Hydell. Gentlemen, approximately one year ago, Mr. Martin has stated in this very chambers 
This controversial with Lamar Dixon has gone on long enough. Let's put it to a vote of the people. I will abide by the decision of the people. Now, this may not be his exact words, but it's near to what he said. The Miller's tax to support was placed on the ballot, which failed. In a recent interview with the news media, Mr. Martin has stated the people voted against supporting a tax to maintain Lamar Dixon. He now wants us to believe some way is now available to buy this facility. Maybe he has come up with a way, but will taxpayer money still need to be used on a facility that even the people who manage it say will never t turn a profit? In my opinion, there's some double talking going on. Let me remind you how forefathers formed a government for the people, by the people, and of the people. Not for the few, by the few, and of the few. This country, great country, which Ascension Parish is still a part, is a de democracy, not another form of government. Be assured, come election time, the people will re be reminded of what is trying to be publicized here tonight. Thank you. Mr. Dwayne Nunez. Thank you, Chairman Bell and Council, and thank you, uh, President Martinez, for the opportunity to speak tonight. My name is Dwayne Nunez. I'm a resident of Ascension Parish. I also serve as the state livestock show leader for the LSU Ag Center, and I'm the manager of the LSU State Livestock Show. Uh, as a resident of the parish, I can't tell you how proud I am tonight to see the city, the parish, the state, uh, federal, all of our elected officials working together to do something positive for the citizens that they represent. So I thank all of you for doing that tonight. And I want to tell you all a little story. I had a friend of mine named <clears throat> Bill Smith. Uh, he emailed me an article a while back uh, that, that after reading it, I thought it pertained to Lamar Dixon. The article was titled, Article Acres of Diamonds. How to Realize the Opportunities that are all around us. It told of a farmer who lived in Africa and through a visitor became very interested in looking for diamonds. Diamonds were being found in abundance on the African continent, and he really wanted to strike out and find his fortune. He sold his farm and began to search for diamonds. He searched for years over the whole continent and eventually went completely broke and drowned himself in a river. Meanwhile, the new owner of his farm picked up an unusual looking rock, placed it on the mantle of his house uh, on the farm in which he was working. One day a visitor stopped by, viewing the rock practically went into terminal convulsions. He told the new owner of the farm that the funny looking rock on the mantle was the biggest diamond ever found. The new owner replied, heck, the whole farm is covered with them. The farm eventually became the Kimberly Diamond Mine, the richest the world has ever known. The original owner was literally standing on acres of diamonds until he sold his farm. I believe we're sitting on 240 acres of diamonds, gentlemen, with Lamar Dixon. I think that's how precious it is to this part of the state uh, and to our young people and to people from all over the state. This story so much reminded me of the struggle that has been the Lamar Dixon story. Could Lamar Dixon be Ascension's acre of diamonds? I think so. As I mentioned earlier, I also serve as the manager for the LSU Ag Center State Livestock Show. Uh, regardless of what anyone has heard about the future location of the show, we have not yet made a decision on that location. Uh, we all had hoped that eventually something would happen at Lamar Dixon. Uh, hopefully it will go forward and this will happen. I can tell you tonight that we are looking forward to sitting down with you and negotiating an agreement with, with the entity that's going to be managing Lamar Dixon for a very long-term agreement. Okay, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Dwayne. Thank you, I have Miss, uh, I hope I say this right, Miss Ariel Sutton.
Good evening. My name is Arielle Sutton, and I am speaking on behalf of the youth involved in the Louisiana 4-H program. I not only serve as an Ascension Parish leader and officer, but I also serve on the state executive board. And my family has been involved with 4-H for many, many generations. I'm the third generation. And we can only, um, we cannot emphasize enough how important it is to the youth in this, in this parish, in this region, and in the state. And Lamar Dixon has become such a fundamental part of this program. In the uh, past history, 4-H only consisted of home economics and agriculture, but today it has grown to cover topics such as, such as communications, science, engineering and technology, leadership, various community service learning projects such as um, those dealing with our environment and those helping the citizens in our community. And the Lamar Dixon provides a facility that can host a place where 4-H'ers can go to, to meet and put on these fabulous activities that they're providing for the parish. And uh, Lamar Dixon serves as a regional meeting place and it is probably the only place that can accommodate its hundreds of youth who are involved in the state livestock program, which Mr. DeWayne just talked about. And uh, the biggest significance that 4-H provides for the youth is that anyone can join, regardless of their social class, their schooling situation, regardless of anything. It is open to all of the youth in the state of Louisiana. Personally, it has been the highlight of my youth, and I could never have found such an organization that could provide so many opportunities, one being able to speak to my parish government tonight. And so um, I would like to thank you for seriously considering the purchase of this fabulous facility, which has been such a part of my life and such a part of the development of 4-H. Thank, thank you. Next I have Mr. Jamie Tompley. Excuse me, Mrs. Jamie Tompley. <laughs> Chairman, Council, and President Martinez, uh, I would like to thank you for the opportunity to be here and speak tonight. I spoke previously at the last meeting about Lamar Dixon uh, representing Ascension Parish 4-H, and uh, tonight I'm speaking on behalf of 4-H and also as a lifelong resident here in Ascension Parish. Um, our 4-H motto is to learn by doing, and our goal with this, our mission, is to develop the youth of Ascension Parish into positive citizens in our community through our educational programs. And Lamar Dixon has definitely been an asset, not only to just our 4-H programs, but to our parish as a whole. Um, just this past year, we've had a 32% increase in enrollment in 4-H here in Ascension Parish. And Lamar Dixon has definitely helped us to do that because we're able to utilize the facilities that accommodate more youth for our programs. Um, of course, our livestock uh, program is one that gets some of the most publicity here in the parish. Uh, we have people who come to Lamar Dixon on the parish, district, and state levels, and it attracts youth and their families, thousands of them, from all four corners of the state. And they're not just showing up to Lamar Dixon to just show an animal. They're learning leadership, life skills, uh, gaining mastery, and a sense of belonging to help develop them into positive citizens. Um, although uh, I talk a lot about of our livestock program. It is one of our highlights, but the but events that we use Lamar Dixon for the most are not just our livestock program. We have science, engineering, and technology clubs, fashion program, our junior leader program, which uh, as you can see, Ariel, who spoke before me, was a product of. So you can see the quality of youth that the 4-H program produces here in the parish of Ascension. Uh, we have our shooting sports and outdoor skills club as well which has gained recent popularity and continues to grow. Um, in our growing parish, uh, land is also becoming a scarce commodity. And with the 240 acres available at Lamar Dixon, uh, this is a precious thing that we probably need to consider when purchasing it. And it has the potential of undeveloped land that the parish can develop into however they see fit to gain recognition for our parish throughout the, you know, in the entire globe. Um, also, um, Lamar Dixon um, 
there's no price that's too high to pay for our education. And if I remember correctly, the citizens of this parish voted for the tax on the ballot to support Lamar Dixon out of their own pocket. They did not vote against the facility itself. And the proposed, uh, the proposed deal to purchase Lamar Dixon does not include that. So um, I just wanted to reiterate what I'd already said and emphasize those points and please urge you to consider keeping this wonderful facility here at home in Ascension Parish where it belongs. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Paul Goodwin, please. Mr. Chairman, members of the council, good evening. And thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak to you on the Lamar Dixon our proposal. President Martinez, I'm sorry, Martinez. <laughs> I've lived in Las Vegas for 25 years. It's pronounced Martinez out there. <laughs> it says J-U-S-U-S is pronounced Jesus out there. But anyhow, let me uh, congratulate you on your courage and leadership to bring Lamar Dixon back to the attention of this community. As you mentioned, it's not there to make a profit. It's there to provide a service. Services that I have personally are received at Lamar Dixon. I belonged to the Y when it was there. No longer there. I confidently go to the Cooperative Extension Services uh, with Desiree and her staff to get suggestions, pamphlets, leaflets on gardening. I'm a city guy. I moved here in 2004, uh, first time living in a rural area. So I'm trying to get acclimated and grow a garden. And thanks to Cooperative Extension, I do have some success. <coughs> One of the constant complaints we heard from youth, and I worked in schools, public schools, for, for 32 years, Nevada, Alabama. One of the constant complaints we heard, there's nothing for us to do. Well, you heard tonight where Lamar Dixon does give the youth of this community, of this state, things to do and a place to do those positive things. Worked in secondary schools. And it was always a chore for us to find a decent place to hold graduations where kids, families, friends could come celebrate instead of trying to pack them into the small school auditorium. Lamar Dixon gave that option. So I would like to urge the council to support our president on his quest to purchase Lamar Dixon and again, as folks have said, you know, make it the time that it could be here in Ascension Parish. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Ms. Catherine Goppett. Good evening. Uh, we didn't get an opportunity to hear too much before the meeting what the specifics were about the I do believe that it looks like we can have the, the price of the facility in our hands by the end of 2010, if I listen correctly. And uh, that would be a blessing, because I think that if we all were asked the question, do we want Lamar Dixon to survive and thrive, the answer would be yes, me included. Um, I do have a question, though. And I think that from what's been stated tonight, we need to ask this question of ourselves. Even if we purchase the facility, we have the money, we still do not have enough money to operate the facility. Buying it is one thing, but having the money to operate it is another. Now the private money may take us through two years, but it won't take us through ten. According to the parish's own financial records, $5.5 million was placed in the Lamar Fund from parish government alone over the life of the lease, which is up on June 30th. The bottom line is the parish conservatively needs 
a minimum of $1.5 million each year to supplement the facility's revenues. So I'm here tonight to tell you I'm glad that the money is there to purchase it. But just like when you purchase a home, you've got to keep it up. You've got to maintain it. You've got to keep the lights on, the AC on. Um, the original study of Lamar concluded that a dedicated source of revenue would be necessary for operating and maintaining, and improvements would also be needed for marketing viability. Where will we get the funds to keep the doors open and make needed improvements? Are we looking at another tax down the road in two years? Some have, suggest have suggested that we could take the additional 2% of the hotel motel tax. Um, that is about $247,000 a year. Utilities alone for Lamar Dixon in 07 were close to half a million dollars. And if we make suggested renovations with air conditioning buildings, we do not know what the cost of the utilities will be. There's also the question about taxes from property owners in District 6. And there is paperwork in the Finance Department that shows that these people will be paying for utilities at Lamar if the parish purchases the facility. The other additional thing that I'd like to uh, bring to your attention, gentlemen, is I really appreciate Mayor Arsenault coming and bringing his resolution of Gonzales City Council supporting Lamar Dixon. We have discussed the uh, finances before. Most of the profit or revenue that's generated from Lamar goes to the City of Gonzales. Now, they're not coming with their uh, checkbook tonight, but I really hope that we can get some kind of a cooperative endeavor agreement with them to help us pay for the ongoing year-to-year -year expenses that it's going to cost us. Again, I'd like to thank you for uh, working with the various people in the government, local, state, and federal. And uh, it's an opportunity to purchase a facility. I would ask you, please, we need a plan for the long-term operation to keep the doors open. Thank you so much. Thank you. At this time, at this time Councilman, I'd like to, uh, I, I need a motion to introduce a, okay. Uh, Pat. Councilman Thompson. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank President Martinez and his administration for doing such outstanding job in okay. putting this together. I want to thank our state and uh, I want to thank our state representatives, uh, Councilman Obear, Councilman Smart, uh, Councilman, sorry, Roof. Representative uh, <laughs> Obear, Representative Smiley, and Senator Almaday, and uh, Representative uh, Lambert for doing an outstanding job and helping us secure funding uh, for this facility. This is probably not probably, but this is the nicest facility that we have uh, in the country, really. Uh, and I'd like to thank the Dixons also for having the visions to put a facility together like the Lamar Dixon. And with saying that, I would like to uh, offer a motion to uh, introduce an uh, It'd be a resolution, Councilman. We, we will resolution to bring you to the next council okay, meeting. Okay, well, I'd like to offer a resolution to bring to the council to introduce an ordinance to exercise the options to purchase the Lamar Dixon. I second it. Okay, I have a, a motion by Councilman Thompson, second by Councilman Randy Kluart. Any discussion? Any objection? Councilman Lohr. Well, I just wanted to say a few comments. Uh, I don't think it's any surprise to folks that I actually uh, come from a suburban background. I uh, don't have any livestock or participate in 4-H or anything like that, unfortunately. But, you know, I recognize the value that that brings. And, I mean, as you heard tonight, I think a lot of the, the you know, the kids um, spoke about the, the impact that it's had on their lives. But um, Councilman Thompson just said a, a key word that I've been it's been run through my head, uh, uh, vision. And, and that really is what excites me the most about uh, about the, the potential to purchase this center, um, the vision of what of what it could be. Sure, it's it's wonderful in, in, in the services it provides now, but there's been a lot of discussion uh, in the past about other things we could do with it uh, besides uh, livestock shows and, and the events that are there now, uh, air conditioning the uh, the main hall, um, developing the hundreds of, ec uh, of acres for recreation. Um, 
so no matter to me, no matter how many angles you look at it, the the emergency preparedness, uh, the the, the uh, economic impact of twenty million dollars a year, and something that hasn't been said is the incredible financial deal that this is. Seven and a half million dollars for this facility is an unheard of price when you're talking about something that's been valued at over fifty million dollars. So. I just feel like it's it's really an opportunity we need to seize upon, and I just wanted to as well express my gratitude to uh, President Martinez, our federal, state, uh, de legislative delegations for, for putting together this coalition and making this happen. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Councilman Shakespeare. Thank you. Councilman. Uh, first of all, I want to echo <coughs> a fellow councilman in thanking the people that's all involved. Um, I, I, I do want to let you know uh, for all the reasons that were stated already. Um, we put it for the people to have the uh, people in Ascension Parish supported with the millage and, 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 and they said no, we, we did not feel like the people of the parish should support that with the millage, but overwhelmingly people were supportive of Lamar Dixon as, uh, as a facility and myself included. Uh, at that point in time, uh, you know, we could have well lost this diamond, and, and I think one person is, is really the only person that could have done everything that was done was President Martinez and his administration, along with his administration, to see uh, the vision that they have. But all of these people, I think for the first time in this parish, we've had a lot of divisions in the past, we've had, had a lot of, uh, 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 one of the things I keep hearing is lack of cooperation. Well, you're seeing cooperative government tonight, uh, and, and I think President Martinez was the person that was able to get all of these entities together. He has the unique abilities to speak to a lot of people and, and find a consensus that people were able to accept. And, and, uh, and that's government. That's politics. And it just happens to be good politics. And I think it's something that, uh, you know, sometimes you see bad politics, and this is one of the things that is good politics. And so I want to uh, appreciate you, uh, President Martinez, and your staff, and everyone, and let the people of Ascension Parish know that, uh, you know, th that is a new dawning in the parish, that we're trying to do things correctly and cooperate. And I, I'm looking forward to Lamar Dixon, not for what it is now, for what it's going to be 10 years from now. And, and my kids and, and maybe one day grandkids. So uh, I support it and I think we you know, need to move forward. Very well said, Councilman Shakespeare. Thank you. Anybody else? One, Mr. Chairman. Councilman Dempsey Lambert. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Parish President. Uh, uh, we also have a letter of support from District Attorney uh, Ricky Babin. And we also, what I'd like to do is to ask you to activate a committee, uh, a Lamar Dixon committee, and we can work together on an operational plan between the council members and the administration. Uh, so if you could name a committee uh, in the, tonight or in the near future, I would certainly Yes, sir, it'll be that. done by tomorrow morning. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah, I was, I was fixing to do that, past President. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was one of the things I wanted to thank. Uh, Councilman Adrian Thompson, he served as the chairman uh however many years now and uh he worked hard on it so uh, thank you thank you uh, one other thing uh miss dolene shake snyder i want to thank her for coming she's with our council on aging and she uh you know some real good things are coming out of this uh you know they was able to hold some some functions out there with you know with the people with wheelchairs and different things they really enjoyed it um thank you for coming out too uh, and it's, it's just a real good thing with all our 4-H <coughs> thank y'all okay councilman any more discussion any objection motion carries motion to adjourn. Uh, councilman Lambert motion to adjourn second by councilman Randy Kluot thank you all for coming tonight